the prices are pretty good. I didn't really come here to spend money, I came here to do the appraisal fair, but I'm spending some money. Hi, I'm George the Antique Nomad. Come with me as I wander the country in search of valuable vintage, amazing antiques, and cool collectibles. We'll buy, sell, and trade at antique malls, shops, and shows, estate sales, flea markets, thrift stores, anywhere people go to find really interesting things that just aren't made anymore. So come on, let's go. Hello everybody, I'm George the Antique Nomad, and I am here in the picturesque little town of Havana, Florida, up in the Panhandle, a little north of Tallahassee. It was founded in 1906, and it has a wonderful little walking district that has a bunch of antiques. People like these little towns, and being able to go around and see lots of interesting things. There's Kellum's Furniture. They say they have antiques, collectibles, lamps, and rugs. Here's the Antique and Design Center, and there's some more shops up the strip here. But I am headed to the Antique and Design Center. So this are these all different dealers? They are. Oh, very good. Okay. This is nice the way it's arranged. I like where you've got the furniture out in the middle where you can really see everything. This is an interesting hall tree with this. Uh, yes, especially with the diagonal piece in here. That's uh, something that I associate with 1870s, 1880s aesthetic period. With the anchor. Oh, that's really cool. That is really different. I wonder who the maker of this is. It almost looks like Coleman or one of those. If it says... It would be in the left drawer. Usually it's in the left drawer and I don't see anything. But that's so interesting. It does look like a machine-made piece, but I love it. It's just such a great design. Definitely uh, looks like something from the 1940s. When it said that it was an art and design center, I thought, oh yeah, we're gonna see some really nicely put together uh, yeah. stuff, and it certainly is. Oh, and look at this clock. Wow, that is really interesting with this uh, castellation here. $45, that's a great price. Uh, I'm sure the clock doesn't work because it says it's as is, and that's the, that's the problem with these is that this particular type of clock is really hard to fix. They were, oh, really? yeah, they were inexpensive new and uh, this is 1920s. I think it's got a 1929 patent date on here actually it looks like. In fact, it might even tell the company name which would be neat. Nope, just U.S. Patent Office 1929. But um, yeah, they just didn't make very good movements for these because it was more about the novelty. Well, it's nice to see, you know, because in real life, people do mix new with old. So if you do it well, yes. and you can show how the old mixes with the new rather than competing with it, then I think it's a great thing. Yes. Oh, we have a little mouse problem here. <laughs> <laughs> I like the high boy, and I am a fan of deer mounts, and I see you've got one. Yes. Oh, this is great. I brought a wreath to put on, and I just haven't gotten around to it. This is a very pretty lamp with is the it? mushroom shade, yes. Um, yeah, I haven't been able to find the price on something like that. Usually they're clear. Yeah, they're usually clear. That's the thing, the decoration. It's, it's leaded crystal. Yeah, it's beautiful, and I think two forty nine dollars is a very fair price I for it. So. Yeah. Oh, it is so much fun, though, isn't it? It is. It is. And you've got a couple of the little swung vases that everyone's after now. These yes. are Fenton, I see. And, and nobody pays attention to them. Yeah, it's funny how, you know, it all just depends on where you are. I mean, I suspect that because you're in the panhandle, I imagine that it's a little more to the traditional taste. And if you were further south in Florida, those would sell in five seconds. Oh, yeah, sure. Yeah. And you know I love this. Yes, yes, that's beautiful. The lithophane with the geisha in the bottom. Oh, she's really cute. How neat. I think that's so cute. I do too. Yeah, those always grab me every time I see them. I'm never gonna see you again. Oh, and this is interesting nail art. You don't see a lot no, of this. No, I saw that and fell in love with it. That's really and I fun. It was really done nice. It's really, it's really. There's a lot of detail to yeah. it. I mean, look at all the flowers and everything. Oh, that is Can just you really cool. How many smash fingers I would have. Oh yeah, no, I I couldn't do it. I would I would have no fingers. <laughs> <laughs> It's just talking about that with a friend of mine who's younger the other day, and he said, well, the Eperns are beautiful, but I don't know what I would do with one. And I said, well, you're just supposed to really look at it. Originally, yeah. they were condiment holders, but that was hundreds of years ago, yeah. and then they I just turned into in pretty things. Yeah. Yes, yeah. exactly. Did yes. he do the repurposing where yes. he hung the lamp on this? Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, I like that. Very industrial looking. That's neat. And a lot of people, farmhouse yeah. decor, are using this too. But he can't keep this stuff in here. Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure this flies out of here. Was mm -hmm. well, your Mule Day like um, old uh, farm equipment and that sort of stuff yeah. comes and to town know, and mules and this things? Area yes. Was shade tobacco. So there's a lot of demonstrations for that. Uh, cane sugar or yeah. syrup. Oh, okay, right, of course. Yeah, well, it <laughs> may, might not be good for you, but it tastes good. <laughs> I guess it's probably getting close to that time, so I probably ought to go up and start uh, working with some people. I'll have a chance to look around between people later on, but there oh, is sure. neat stuff here. The old Doesn't rail lamp nice is great. Taste, yeah, yeah. yeah. Look at these chairs. And these French candelabra yes. with the angle, that is just beautiful. Those look like early 1900s. That looks like a ram and a kid. Oh, that's really neat. I haven't seen anything like that in all the detail. Mm -hmm. Look at the detail in the place. Yes, and they love the contrasting color. It mm -hmm. seems like something, I mean, they they look like they're European. The little low back one, that's neat to see the pair together. And these were actually made in Switzerland. And so that's why they have elements of both French and German because, well, Switzerland has elements of both France and Germany. Fabrication Suisa Albert Schild Interlaken. So Interlaken, Switzerland. Very cute. Here's a nice set of Lamanazov porcelain. Lamanazov was definitely one of the early and very important porcelain companies. This is from the USSR at the time this was made. It is actually something that was made before it was the USSR. You can see the label there. Very pretty set, it's 425. And I noticed something over here I thought was neat. These uh, pair of, it looks like the oh, blue yes. and gray. Wouldn't they look great in a local plantation because we're just surrounded by them. Oh yeah, yeah, you're right near plantation country. This is really interesting. And uh, 165 for the pair doesn't seem bad for no. what they are. I'm sure they probably date back to 1960s uh, you think? maybe, maybe have to look and see at the cords and everything but oh yeah you're right i think yeah they look like they're older and there was a lot of nostalgia for this in that period so very cool and then this face is interesting and tall and it is royal hager but it's got a hole in it darn it because I really like that otherwise. Yeah. yeah, I wonder what happened too. That's a strange place for a hole for that. It's almost <laughs> like they dropped a rod down the middle of it or something. Now this is a modernist design in oak and we're starting to see some interest in these. These are late 70s era where you have the contrasting oak veneer and then these very rounded shapes and they did lamps that look like posts with rounded shapes that went with them. This is priced at $3.95. I'm starting to see interest in this sort of thing. Not everybody can do teak. Some people really want a little bit of grain in their furniture, and this is a way to get that. Here's two different type of Playboy mugs, and these are very collectible now. This one is the one with the bunny, of course, $12. It's actually a pretty good price. And then this one is the one with the Leroy Neiman girl on it, also priced at $12. Those do sell for a bit more than that. Not enough for me to make money at resale. It's a beautiful piece. It is. The thing with teak is that um, I personally like it and a lot of people do and it's very hot right now and so the prices are, you know, I mean the price he has on it is the kind of price I'm seeing on these things. I think it's very specific to the big cities mm -hmm. and I'm also noticing that in some of the, with some of the younger people, they're starting to say the same thing that people did in the 70s, which is yes. it's a bunch of brown boxes yes. and I'm bored. Yes. And yes. so... Yeah, that's yeah. what my son is selling. I guess every generation. It's mm -hmm. what's nostalgia and what they remember. That and blank uh, audio tapes. Yes, blank audio tapes. Strangely enough, I went to a garage sale and I was with a friend of mine and he said, oh, you ought to buy those. They were 50 cents. And I was like, oh, who's going to want these? Nobody does that anymore. He said, no, no, you should look online. Just buy them. Yeah. And sure enough, I think they went for $35. Yep. And I just thought, wow, it's, a, it's another world. <laughs> yes. Now, this is interesting because it is Nord America. So this is a globe, but this is actually German because they have... Germany as Deutschland. And Atlantischer, so, and then you see all the uh, shipping routes of the time. That's really neat. I'm not used to seeing 
foreign globes so much. But again, because we're not that far from a military base, people would have brought stuff in. And this one is $65, which I actually think is... And 20% off. And that's really not a bad price for being something that's interesting like this. Um, you just have to find somebody who was really into German to want it. But I bet there's somebody out there. That is neat. It's been long enough since we started seeing artists doing these sorts of carvings that we are seeing a secondary market for them now. These are only priced at $40 a piece. They would have been well over 100 when they were made new. These are Web Crystal. Web was one of the better American crystal makers these eight little crystal dessert dishes. Sometimes you'll see the web mark etched on them. Sometimes you just have to know the patterns. $120 for the desserts with the little coaster liners. And then in the back, those really interesting with the very narrow stem and the controlled bubble in the bottom, that shape, those are Home Guard Princess. $145 for the set of six. Home Guard is a very well regarded Danish maker. And, you know, collectible barware, it does sell, and those are names that the people who collect modernist barware do know. Down here, a couple of cigarette holders. The one on the left is sterling mounted with guilloche at the end with the little florals. It's nice to see it in that condition. It must not have been used much. It was a gift in a presentation case. If it had been used a lot, you'd expect to see burn marks on the end, and it doesn't have them, which is nice. And then the one on the right is Meerschaum, like the Meerschaum pipes. Here's a neat 1880s English stoneware water crock by Mawson Filter Company, the Optimus, Newcastle on Tyne. It's missing its spigot, but it's unusual to see these. They were nicely decorated with applied slipware much like Jasperware, in what had become a very traditional English style at the time, and this one is priced at 220 Not a form we see in the States very often. Look at this cute little silhouette, reverse painted. And this one is signed, which is a little unusual. It's got a milkweed background, also a little more unusual, and it's multicolored painted as opposed to just the black painted. So this is a little nicer one. The signature is Newman. It doesn't tell us anything about that, but this is going to be 1930s. It's $20 for what it is. I think that's a rather good price. And it turns out it's half price. So I think it belongs to me now. This is Boots, the shop cat. I say Boots owns this place. Yeah, I was going to say, you're probably the boss, aren't you? Yeah. Yes. This piece is fun because it's in silhouette, and this is... Nippon, but you don't see the black and white very often. Usually you see this in lusterware, and this is Noritake for the Morimura brothers of New Jersey who imported this before the Second World War. So that's a little different piece of Noritake than we usually see. Typically we see pieces a little more like this. This one is also Noritake, this little mustard pot. That's a more typical design with the florals and the colors. Well, this is marked Grand Vase, and it is truly grand, and it has enamel beading. Now, there are some breakages, otherwise I would buy this because it's only $45. You see there's some losses here. This is an early piece of Satsuma from Japan, probably 1890s or so. It's their first generation going into the second generation, so the detail is very good and very heavy on this, and if the condition was just a little better, this would be a steal. It's still a very good deal at $45 for somebody who's decorating with it. Hey everyone, I just wanted to take a quick break and thank you for watching this video. If you're enjoying it, please give it a thumbs up and leave a comment. Also, please do subscribe because then you can click that bell to be notified of future videos. We have membership packages. We appreciate the support of our super fans who help us do extra bonus content. You can check that out by hitting the join button below or clicking the link in the description. Check out our new channel, The Antique Nomad Live. We'll have a lot of fun there too. So check us out here on The Antique Nomad and also on The Antique Nomad Live. Now let's get back to this video. They call this the sunshine mirror. It's $65. It definitely looks like sunshine. It's made of metal. Looks like a 1970s or 80s design. The big helping hand is $45 here. I talk about Lloyd's Looms a lot, but there was another company called Johnson Ford that also did very tightly wrapped wicker in the 1920s and 30s. And this is a good example right here. 
The Johnson Ford is typically a little darker from what I've seen than the Lloyd's Looms and less of a greenish cast. But you can see the design in the wicker here and that it's a very tight weave. This is priced at only 200 with the four chairs. The four chairs are definitely from the right era. I don't know whether they came with the piece originally. We'll have to look at the marks. But for 200 it's a great deal. Also in wicker, and this one's been repainted, but this is vintage. This would have been a child size for only $59. This would have sure been handy last year with everybody taking their classes at home. But you've got the nice drop so that you can put all your stuff in there and hang on to it. It's very cute. I could see somebody using this as a phone desk in a new house or maybe out on a porch to have a little writing surface in case you're out there and somebody gives you a call on the phone and you need to take a note. I think that's very sweet. That's really neat actually yeah, the nice. way that you opened it and it turns like that. Mm -hmm. I um, oh, you're you're a wonderful hand model. That's perfect, actually. <laughs> uh, yeah, this is so neat. It's like a rotating bookcase, except it's an opener for sheet music or paper or that kind of thing. I don't blame him for being in love with this. Yeah. This is really nice. It's about 1900. He's only two and a quarter. I think is a very reasonable mm -hmm. price for what it is. I, I have to say, I have not seen this in a music cabinet before. I'm used to just seeing it with bookcases. So, I think that's rather unusual. Bet he finds tramp art if he's cleaning out barns because a lot of stuff, you know, again, that's that thing that dad made that mom doesn't want to look at in the house, so she makes him keep it out there. There's some good stuff in barns that was relegated from the house years ago. It's definitely a place, when I go to house sales now and they have a barn, a lot of times I start there first. Oh, yeah. I found a sharecropper's crib at a farm sale. It How was neat. In perfect condition. Oh, I wow. I like $100 so I was mentioning that people were taking headboards and footboards and cutting them down and making them into benches and here's a really good example of that. You can see this was a twin and the back clearly is a headboard and then they took the footboard and cut it in half and made the sides out of it, used part of the rail and then put planks in and that's how you get your bench. So this is a really good way because twin beds are very hard to sell right now. If you're looking for something to repurpose that unfortunately in this market nobody is going to miss, it's probably twin beds because they, people just want larger beds now. So this is a way to take something, especially if it was scratched or water damaged or something that might get thrown out and turn it into something really useful. And they sell for pretty good money. This one's priced at $2.50. I know there is a cupcake store in Thomasville, Georgia, not far from here that paid somebody to make a whole bunch of these and that's their interior, all of their benches for their cafe tables. A lot of people do a booth to support their habit because then you get to go out because you start looking and you're going to find things that you know are a good deal mm -hmm. and it might not be what you collect exactly. but you know it's worth something and then... Sales and that kind of stuff. She picked this up the other day and I thought it was kind of cool but it really doesn't go for a whole lot. But this little teapot right here. Oh yeah, the Tom Tom, the Piper Sun by Shawnee. They used to sell for more. I think Shawnee is the neatest stuff. Yeah. And I, it's just got such whimsy. And this came out uh, right about the time the firm started in the late four, uh, late 30s. Mm -hmm. And you've got 35 on it. That's a very good price. It should sell for that price. Yeah. It, they used to go for double that. So yeah. I think actually that's... And of course she does all the Pyrex. So on the low side, yeah. And boy, Pyrex is so hot now. Oh, I know. It's just unreal, some of the stuff. And then you've got this piece, which is a different color, this Emerald Crest, 2450. That's not a bad price on that, that that's either. For, uh, that's her uh, thing, too. She likes that. She likes the blue crest. Yeah, and you don't see a lot of that either, actually. And then the little Fenton Heart box, that's neat for 1975. I like the Belik lamp too, and this is the Shamrock. This is a more recent one, but I love that it's got the Celtic knot and everything in mm -hmm. it. And 97.50 is a lot less than they charge for those new, so. Yeah, yeah. That's a neat piece. We've, we've been doing now for, God, we've been together for 10 years and we probably started doing this probably a year after we got together. Oh, that's cool. It's so, fun because it's something you can do together, you know. It's on every wall in the house. This just filled with stuff. Like, oh. I, have, I have 75 or 80 teak pictures. Wow, yeah. It is addictive, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, and you've got the Fire King, and it's all the Georges Briard. This is cool. He did use Fire King for a lot of his stuff. In fact, most of his stuff was done on other people's uh -huh. blanks. You don't see the fruit tree very often. Yeah. And it's got the candle uh, warmer and holder, too. So 
$38. I have to say, I think your prices are very reasonable for what you've got. She loves that Shelly stuff. I do too, actually. And wow, this is, uh, this is for the whole thing. I see there is a crack in the sugar bowl, but you've got the uh, covered butter and you've got plates and some cups and saucers and some little dishes. And actually, um, if you don't mind, I'd like to buy that. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> yeah. Well, we, we sit back and we go, okay, so what did it sell for on eBay? And then we realized that eBay has millions and millions and millions of audience right. buy something. So if we if we if something sells for a hundred dollars on eBay, we figure we can get sixty dollars here because our, our our target group is a lot smaller. Exactly. And I've thought often about trying to sell stuff on eBay, but just the packing of glass and hoping it doesn't get damaged. And people saying they didn't get it and this that. And the other. With glass, it's a headache, and you know it's nice to see and feel it in person anyway. And these are really pretty pieces of new Martinsville. This is the company that turned into Viking, mm -hmm. and you've got the Janus pattern here from the late 30s, early 40s. It's got that same very pretty good quality blue that uh, Cambridge Caprice mm -hmm. had at that time. Yeah, it's neat. I'm glad that uh, she knows her glass so well because they're really good pieces and your prices are very fair. So we're in North Florida and this looks like a South Florida style modernist display and it's in brass. I'm used to seeing these in chrome but of course now brass is coming onto the market too and I just think this is pretty neat and it's $75 and it appears to have some age. At least enough age to the original from probably the late 1970s so that might just come with me. I like this hand glove mold because this would have been one for dishwashing. See the texture in it that's why it's a little different than the regular latex gloves. They've got 15 on this one but just because it's a little different I like the texture and I also uh, got jewelry to display so I think I'll take that. These are really inexpensive for what they are. This is Limoges. You can tell by the fanciness of the handle that this is late Victorian and it's a little heavier in quality, but it does have the field mark from New York. Right about 1900. Now this one does have a little spider crack in the bottom. This one seems to be in perfect shape. Only $12. I mean, if you were going to put something out on the table just to have one fun piece of old china, that would be a good choice. Nice little wash stand here, $49. I know they have a mix does. of older and newer furniture. I'm, part of the reason is because, again, they're doing design and interiors. So there's going to be some newer pieces as well as old. I like the way that this has been done in the silvering. Nice old consignment armoire, they said here. But this is definitely a place that you can collect things if you like smalls and you can decorate a house if you like vintage and if you want to mix old and new there's some good ideas about how to do this. This is how a lot of the antique stores in this part of the country operate but what I like about this one is that they make an emphasis to say yes we have antiques and they really do have antiques and that way someone like me who mainly is interested in the antique and vintage can come in and really have some fun. Here's a really nice Royal Bond German fish set. The big platter and then there would typically be a number of plates to go with it as a set. They were very showy. Fish was not something you could get if you lived inland until refrigeration came to trains in the 1880s. Nice little Limoges finger bowls and liners. These they are attributing to Mosier. Little cordial set, very delicate etching. This is Bohemian glass. Whenever you see this sort of style with the stag in the trees and then this very elaborate detail around it, that is Bohemian style. Very nice pine chest of drawers here. This again puts me in the mind of Irish pine. Doesn't really say where it came from. It does have dovetailing. So this is not a new piece by any means. It's got the old hardware. A lot of pine has been rebuilt where they take one old section and they build an entire new piece around it. So it's nice to know that this is genuine. And it's really not priced badly. 125 seems actually very inexpensive for solid wood and raw pine. Blondie and Dagwood. 
the true temp. 60 minus 20 percent is 48. That's about where they're selling these days. Here's a discount booth, 50 percent off everything. I see some things that would be worth buying if you collected them. I like the two Borg horns here advertising the Danish beer. They're not wildly old, but it's a nice set for $25. This looks like something out of the 80s. I'm curious since 80s is coming back. Top hat by Leclerc, 1986. Yep. They have it at 200. They say it retails 250 to 300 now. I believe that's probably right. This was Austin Products who did these in 1986. Whoa. And it's heavy. And then this is going to be Sirocco or Burwood or one of those. Only $28. That's actually a good look. But I have a bunch of this already to fill walls, so it is a Burwood. If you like Victorian but you're not into heavy ornament, this may be the style for you. This is Empire Revival style. It comes out in the 1820s during the revival of the French Empire. Those early pieces have some evidence of being handmade, but then they quickly switched over to machine making and the style lasted really through about the 1890s. It's heavy. It tends to have these large rolled legs and feet. This one's hand dovetailed. This one has a nice tag in it. Originated 1887 Wolverine Manufacturing Company in Detroit. A lot of furniture made in Michigan. This is a very pretty piece too. This is Bavarian. It is hand-painted porcelain. Very pretty birds. And this would have been made sometime right around 1890 to 1900. Well, what a fun stop, and I'm so glad to discover Havana, Florida. There's a lot of other antiques here. I will definitely have to come back. I'm very happy with the things I found. And now I've got to go pack the car. So in the meantime, I'm George the Antique Nomad. Thanks so much for watching. We'll have more interesting places like this to discover, and we'll take you along with us. So see you soon. Thanks for joining me again in the fun and fascinating antique community here where online meets the real world. Please click the subscribe button below. Click the bell to be notified when new videos upload. Leave a comment below and hit thumbs up to like this video. Links to our online social media daily posts and our items for sale are in the description. This is George at The Antique Nomad. Bye for now!